Africa as a continent is a blessed continent when you talk about arable land and resources. But what they lack is the will. What they lack is leadership. And with this, you'll find lots of problems here and there and many complex issues. Oil exploration in Nigeria and Africa as a whole is a very lucrative business. And presently, Aliko Dangote is set to venture into oil business and refinery. Before we get to see the refinery Aliko Dangote is building, which is going to be the largest single train refinery in the world, and S take over Africa oil production. Let us take a brief look at the biography of a potential competitor in the African oil production field. Some people might not know of this man, as most of the time we talk about Aliko Dangote, the oil, and some other people that own oil well. Um, they've been given oil well to manage, and some of them have um, kind of leased this oil well out to foreign companies. There is a man called Arthur. Arthur. Eze. Um, he is a Biafran. Prince Arthur Eze was born on November 27th in 1948. He is an indigenous of Upo village in Dunu Kofia, local government area of Anambra State, Nigeria. Arthur has royal blood. As you can see, he's a prince. His older brother is the high chief of Upo village in the Dunu Kofia, local government area of Anambra State. Arthur uh, um, owes the title of Ozo Igbodu of Igbo land. From 1970 to 1974, Otto had his basic education at St. Augustine Secondary School in Ikwere, Imo State, where he had his first school living certificate. And as you can see, these are the photos, pictures of the Prince Otto. He went ahead to study mechanical and chemical engineering at California University, Long Beach, um, from 1974 to 1978. He's a business tycoon and he is the founder and chairman of Atlas Petroleum International Limited. He is considered as one of the richest persons in Africa. Not the richest, one of the richest person. And they, they said he's estimated to worth over $5.8 billion. In 1991, Author is a founded Atlas Oranto Petroleum. Probably found you've come across Oranto Petroleum. Um, he founded this company for oil exploration activities in West Africa and was able to incorporate it into uh, in, in, incorporate it in two years later. To date, the company is the largest holder of oil exploration blocks in Africa. The company reached um, is the reach of this company has continued to grow, and just two oil blocks alone can produce more than hundred thousand barrels of crude oil each day. I mean, maximum if they have to put that and uh, maximize it. The company currently has twenty-two oil and gas licenses in twelve jurisdictions across Africa. It has assets in Nigeria, Equatorial Guinea, and several Atlas Oranto operated oil blocks. However. Dan Guten looks set to be a new competitor in the African oil market and the world at large. His refinery undergoing construction is estimated at $9 billion only. Just that one, $9 billion, that's the estimate. It could be less, it could be more. Now, we are talking of someone that is worth $5.8 billion, net worth, and someone, Dan Gote, is investing into his own refinery and this refinery construction is going to cost $9 billion. Now, that $9 billion is just a figure. It might not necessarily, uh, necessarily mean that that is a total figure as they come up with numbers. I know a refinery is not cheap, but $9 billion, that's a lot of money. Did he get this money from loan that he has to service? Do not think that people that they call rich men do not. The, the thing, the title, rich man, the riches, this and that, uh, apart from you know assets that you have, um, uh, the, apart from the cash that you might have, um, the, you are also have something you are credit worthy. So simply put, Dangote can reach out to HSBC, reach out to American Bank, reach out to many other banks, reach out to banks in Nigeria and ask for a loan to service the $9 billion that they claim he is putting into the new oil refinery. Now, before we continue, let's take a look, a brief look at Dangote's biography. I've given the biography of Otto 
is it? Now let's look at Alaji Aliko Dangote, GCON. He's a Nigerian businessman from the north of Nigeria and a philanthropist who is the founder and chairman of Dangote Group, an industrial conglomerate in Africa. They're all over the place. They're involved in different production of cement, is involved in food, just you know, commodities. That is what he's involved in. Aliko Dangote, an Aousa Muslim from Kano State, was born 10th April 1957 into a wealthy Muslim family. Dangote is the son of Mohammed Dangote and Maria Sanusi Dantata Dangote now and author Eze. Dangote is the son of Mohammed Dangote, like I said. His mother happens to be the daughter of Sanusi Dantata. He is the great grandson of Alaji Al Hassan Dantata, the richest West African at the time of his death in 1955. So, when you look at the connection, you get the answers. Dangote had his basic education at the Sheikh Ali Kumasi Madrasa, and after that, the Capital High School, Kano. In 1978, he graduated from the Government College, Bernie Kudi, Kudu. Here, you can see the photos of Dangote. He furthered his education and received bachelor's in business studies and administration from al Aqsa University in Cairo. The Dangote Group was established as a small trading firm in 1977. The same year, Dangote relocated to Lagos to expand the company. Today, it is a multi-million dollar company with many of its operations in Benin, in Benin, Benin Republic, Ghana, Nigeria, Zambia, and Togo. Dangote now covers food processing, cement manufacturing, and freight. The Dangote Group also dominates the sugar market in Nigeria, and that's a major issue. You know, it, it caused a lot of problems for a lot of people. As a lot of people who venture into production of sugar in Nigeria, but Dangote was the only one that was given license for a lot of businesses in Nigeria. His major supplier is a major supplier to the country's soft drink companies, breweries, and confectionery. So the Coca-Cola and the beer and many of those things that you drink. The sugar is gotten from Dangote's refinery. How then do you think Dangote will not be richer? Dangote Group has moved from being a trading company to being the largest industrial group in Nigeria. Its subsidiaries include Dangote Sugar, Refineries, Dangote Cement, and Dangote Flour. In Nigeria today, Dangote owns the largest refinery in Africa and the third largest in the world, producing 800,000 tons of sugar annually. Dangote Group also owns um, salt factories and flour mills. In a major, he is, he is, in fact, is a major importer of rice, fish, pasta, cement, fertilizer. The company exports cotton, cashew nuts, cocoa, system seeds, and ginger to several countries. It also has major investment in real estate, banking, transport, textiles, oil, and gas. Recently, this company employs more than eleven thousand people and is the largest industrial company in West Africa. Aliko Dangote has an estimated net worth of um, $8.3 billion. Now, you will compare when you look at all of this, they said, okay, a net of 8.3. How is he able now to open up a refinery that costs that amount? That is why I said there are a lot of things involved in this. If those figures are truly correct, um, it do, not necessarily his own cash, they loan money and they service it. Now, he, he is now the 162nd wealthiest person in the world. And he is the richest person in Africa, the continent of Africa. Dangote is the richest. Dangote Refinery is an oil refinery owned by the Dangote Group that is under construction um, in Lekki, Lagos, Nigeria. When this construction gets completed, they said it will have a capacity to produce and process, I mean, 650,000 barrels of crude oil per day. Aliko Dangote unveiled plans for this refinery sometimes in September 2013, although the groundwork of this has been there. He said that he has secured $3.3 billion for financing the project, meaning lent. He, he, he kind of got that. Um, as at this time, the refinery is estimated to cost about $9 billion, like I said, of which $3 billion will be invested by the Dangote Group, and the remainder will come via commercial loans from different um, you know, banks and different individuals that want to be part of this. So he's bringing out $3 billion and the rest $6 billion will be brought from different sources, probably government, I don't know. Now, the location, the, the change in location to Lekki construction of the refinery did not begin until 2016, um, like I told you. So now when we look at all those two groups of people, um, it seems Dangote is in now 
And, you know, this refinery, this would leave Aleko Dangote and Otho is a battling for supremacy in the African oil market as they will try to outshine each other. That tells you that things are happening in Nigeria. Um, well, no more monopoly. This is an Igbo man. Oranto Petroleum is out there doing his own thing. And um, this man called Aliko Dangote is there also doing his own thing. That's for people that believe that, oh, it's only the people in the north. Yes, he must have been helped somewhere, somehow. Um, the Oranto too must have been helped one way or the other. Um, you know, everyone needs help in life anyway. Uh, Dangote got his own in that way. He also might have gotten his own. But then that's an Igbo man, a Biafran, that has at least... He has made his impact when it comes to business. I'm talking of this kind of oil and gas business. And only Dangote and Arthur Eze will be battling for supremacy for the African oil.